Follow on YouTube. A woman leaves her man. Why did I say it like that? A wife leaves her husband for a scammer. Uh, it gets kind of wild. Before we continue, if you want to like or subscribe, please do. Um, much appreciated. If you don't want to, that's fine too. We're working on a soundboard here, so if you want to help uh, do that, we are community funded here, uh, and I appreciate it. We are just trying to get a PC soundboard, about probably about this big, nothing too crazy. Um, and so we appreciate your help. All right, enough of that. All right, so let's get into this video. Shout out to uh, the social catfish. I am obsessed with Stranger Things. But the thing is, when I tallied it all up, it was 10000 ish dollars. I told my ex-husband, I said, listen, I said, it's not working out. I said, you're not letting me be me. You're not letting me be free. I said, I think you need to leave. So he left. Within two months, he was gone. What's up? Random fact. That blur that you saw, I used that same blur. The circle blur. I, I just learned that like a few months ago because I didn't know how to, because I don't like to put kids' faces in my thumbnails. So sometimes there are kids in there, so I blur their face. And judge you learn that? That's random. So let's go forward here about her divorcing her husband because I think that's really important here. So with Liv, and he was like, but I'm not technically with her. He said they had broken up. Did he ever post anything that they were broken up at that time or? There were things. Oh, hold on. It's not going to make any sense if I don't explain anything. So this individual got catfished by, um, I think his name is Decor. She'll, I'm sure they'll say the name, but there's a person from Stranger Things um, that she got catfished by, right? And so what they're talking about right now is that he broke up. He was breaking up with his girlfriend, Liv, which wasn't true. This isn't the real individual, um, but he's going to push her into thinking that they broke up. And so that's where we are. I noticed basically at the time that he said that they had broken up, he said they've been broken up for about six months. When That's I went name, back into his past history, like on his Instagram and things, the romantic sort of, you know, flirty messages that they would send to each other, like, you know, post about each other had stopped within that time period. They weren't doing Valentine's Day posts. They weren't doing birthday posts. He wasn't posting about her. She wasn't posting about him. The only thing that I have seen in the last two years of those two posting about each other recently was a thing where she was posting about their five-year anniversary. A year of not talking to somebody on the phone is very long time, Michaela. That is one thing that was a huge red flag to me, but at the same time, I kind of understood because he said where she was so controlling of him and he couldn't get away from her, like she's glued at his hip. He wasn't able to call. He wasn't able to, you know, video chat and stuff like that. After, I want to say this, guys, and this is going to sound mean because this is coming from a short average. Uh, I make average money short and I'm also overweight. OK, so this is coming from me. Baby girl, I'm sorry to say this, but. This is the problem that we do have sometimes with the culture that we have as far as hooking up. Her husband was out of shape too, right? But to think that a man who's an actor, who's famous, who's attractive, look at his girl that he was dating and look at you. I'm just being honest here. Look at Liv. This is the girl that she thought he broke up with, right? Right? Her. Liv. Liv. He thought that she he would break up with her based off of the, you know, them being toxic and everything like that. She she he would leave. Sorry, muted myself that he would leave that for this. He out of any woman he could have went and talked to and spoke to. He chose you. That is the delusional stuff that we have got to stop letting happen to us. And it's not just the her thing. It's not like I'm not saying that she if she was attractive and it would I mean, it would at least make more sense. But that's how these scammers get these people, man. They make them go into complete delusion. And because of the way society goes today, people think that they can always get better, that if they divorce their husband, if they divorce their wife, they can get the world. I'd be dumb to think and listen. I'd be dumb to think, oh, you know, what? if I divorce my wife, I could probably get a beautiful model 
just because your marriage is struggling and there's stuff going on, you got to understand the real sacrifice you're going to end up doing is if you do end up getting a divorce, you might just not get a person. Well, if they're obviously abusive and stuff like that, but you might not get a better person that's better looking than them. You might not get a person that's what society would consider better. They may be better personality wise. They may be better. They may treat you better. That stuff can happen. People think they go from dating somebody who is average looking to somebody who's a 10, who's going to treat them better. That's fairy tale. That's fairy tale. Notebook bull job. Bull job. That ain't how it works. So when she keeps, and the reason I brought that up is because she says that was a red flag. She says that so many times in this video. Oh yeah, that was another red flag. And that was a real major red flag. And that was a red flag. But you believe the fantasy that somebody like him would be into you. And that you know that's not true. But society would tell you that even though you're an overweight woman, an overweight woman with a child, you would get the best of the best. Just because you're a great person. We have got to stop doing that. We all, we get what we get in this life. I'm an average looking man. I'm going to get an average looking girl. There's no reason not to think, oh, because, because I'm, I'm kind of nice. I should get a girl. No, no, you're going to have to bring something, baby. We're average people. Average people need to start, start talking about average people the same. Yes. Talk about what, what you bring to the table. I'm sorry. I'm an average man. You got to bring something. Okay. But you ain't got to bring a lot. Okay, I'm going to bring some eggs and bacon. Uh, well, I don't eat eggs and bacon, but let's just talk for the concept the most general. I'm going to bring some eggs and bacon. Baby, I need you to bring some toast. I'm not asking you to bring the world. I'm going to bring the eggs and bacon. Can you bring toast? Because, look, we're average people. We're going to need to work together to make this work. I'm not asking you to do everything. I'm not. And don't ask me to do everything. We're going to have to work together. Baby, that's just how it goes. But that's not what she expected. She expected to bring her overweight body with a child to a man who's making $150,000 an episode on Stranger Things. <laughs> that's what she thought. That's what she thought was going to happen. A man who's making that much money is going to want an overweight woman who has a child. Who husband was also overweight. It's not like she had, not like she was dating Denzel. You know what I'm saying? I just think that's dangerous. And I'm not trying to make fun of her. It's just like, the delusion that we live in society, we really think we can have it all. I think that I personally can be fat and also get somebody who looks like Kelly Rowland. No, I, no. She'll never know who I am ever. You know what I'm saying? If, if I'm Kelly, I'm going to pick better. I wouldn't pick me if I was an attractive woman. I wouldn't pick me. I'm just being honest with you, baby. Why can't we do that? I think men do that better. But some men don't. Some men, they think that, I understand the money, it, it does mean a lot. But some men think just because they're making a little bit of YouTube money that they can get any chick on the planet. There was a dude who was a big YouTuber who tried to date Brittany Venti before she got Sean, who think before you sleep. And I showed y'all her, yeah, I showed y'all Brittany Venti yesterday. She, he thought because he was a big YouTuber, he could get with Brittany. Nope. Doesn't matter all the time, baby. Just, just, just living your reality. He was not nearly good enough, good enough looking to be with Brittany. Okay. And Sean, and I'll be honest, Sean ain't even the best looking, but Sean has such, whatever. <laughs> Sean is just a, from what I can tell, a good guy overall. All right, let's continue. Of those two posting about each other recently was a thing where she was posting about their five year anniversary. A year of not talking to somebody on the phone is very long time, Michaela. That is one thing that was a huge red flag to me, but at the same time, I kind of understood because he said where she was so controlling of him and he couldn't get away from her, like she's glued at his hip, he wasn't able to call her. That's he not why, girl. To, you know, you just wanted to live in fantasy land. Like that. After communicating with him for months, Michaela had to make a choice. It was either her husband or Dacre. He told her this was the only way they could truly be together. Because he, he gave me the ultimatum. After we had been together for a little while, he gave me an ultimatum. He said, listen, he said, it's either your husband, he said, or it's me. And I said, look, there's no competition. I said, you treat me better. So I told my, you Come know, on, I baby. told my ex-husband, I said, listen, I said, it's not working out. I said, you're not letting me be me. You're not letting me be free. I said, I think you need to leave. So he left within two months. He was gone. You know, my ex-husband is out of the house. I said, I'm separated from him. I said, there's no one here except for me and, you know, my daughter, Rain. I said, it's just us. 
I said, now it's your turn. I was like, if you're going to be with me, I said, you have to make efforts. I said, even if those efforts are just getting, you know, your own stuff away from her. Dacre had agreed to leave his girlfriend to be with me. He was going to leave her. <laughs> you think Doc Dacre was going to leave, even though this, this is not the real Dacre, obviously, guys, we get that. But he thought that a man like that would leave a girl like that to get with a girl like her. Once again, delusional. Michaela. But we wanted to know what exactly was making her think that this whole thing. Look was at her, y'all. When Stranger Things season four came out, the day before it came out, he texted me and he said, hey, you need to watch episode four. And he said, if you don't watch anything else, watch episode four. And when it came out the next day and he showed up in that episode mm -hmm. and I was like, well, who else would know that? And he would send me poems which I am a poem reader. I've actually got his book here. And the poems that he was sending me are things that would... Oh my gosh, the 50 Shades of Grey, Grey, 50 Shades of Grey, just straight garbage. She was impressed that he could write poems and said, I'm an avid poet. And she's just making herself seem like she's such a creative person on this planet. Look at this picture. Look at this. This is what she thought was going to happen. Posit everything into her bank account and send it to Daker through Bitcoin. And now you understand why I had to contact you guys, because I'm like, it's not the typical scam. OK, um, it's unique. I mean, it sounds like the typical scam. <laughs> it sounds like a typical scam. It's, see what they played on with this young lady. And we're going to go to the end. Um, just to show you all that when they, when, they, when they show her how she fell for all of this and how many times she said this was a red flag, I just want y'all to see that. But before we continue, it, 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 when I heard the scam, oh, you got, I mean, the only reason the scam worked is because you truly believe that somebody that beautiful would even think about going with you. That's what failed. It's not because it was elaborate. This was not... When you hear how this scam worked, guys, it was not that elaborate. He preyed on a woman who was delusional. All he had to do is probably look at a couple of posts and be like, oh, she's delusional. <laughs> I'm on her. All right. He's trying this on multiple women, but the women that's going to be the easiest to get are the women who think that they're more than they are. If this woman had just been like, I mean, why would he want to go after me? If she had just thought that for a couple of seconds, she'd have been good, probably. But what I think happened is she thought, oh, she may have doubted it maybe for a couple of seconds, but she was so unhappy in her marriage because her husband was just so terrible and her husband just wouldn't allow her to, because based on what I heard, he did not touch her. He just, what she said that when they left each other, she said that her husband, she left her husband because she, he, she didn't allow, he didn't allow her to be her creative self is what she said. Okay. Okay. But the reason she ultimately left him is because she had to make a decision between him or a guy she's never seen, spoke to, or even FaceTime a day in her life who treats her better, even though he giving you no money, you give, you gave him $10,000. I didn't mention that, but she ended up giving him $10,000. Right over time, you know, you do the bit by bit. She ended up giving giving this man ten thousand dollars. Right, you're you're doing all of this work. You're giving him gift cards. You're doing all this stuff. How in the f is he treating you better than your husband, who's at least providing a house and stuff, who's at least putting some bread on the table? That's still income. I don't care if she's the breadwinner or not. Money is money. When you're an average person making average money. It's nice to have a spouse who also works unless there's kids in the house and it's be nicer if she stayed at home because it starts adding up. You used to have to add in daycare. But it, anybody who's married who's average understands how important it is to have a spouse. They do add. Just being there and having somebody to help you clean the house. Having somebody there to help you with the dishes. Some having somebody there to help you with the income. Having somebody there to help you with your child. It's nice to have the average things in life. I know we talk about high value men. We ain't, I ain't in that category. So let me talk about the people down here. It's nice to have somebody, even when things ain't going perfect. It's still nice to have somebody, even if y'all go through weeks of not talking, because it does happen. 
Y'all get in an argument, you disagree, you she disagree, you just think it's better for y'all not to talk for a couple weeks. I've heard of couples that have done that who have been married for 40 plus years and they they didn't talk to each other for a month because it was just crazy. Things weren't going well. They needed a break. They didn't leave the house. Still slept in the same room or maybe on, one on the couch, one not. It happens, men. It happens, women. But she was so convinced that a guy who was so much better than her husband wanted her, she could not escape the reality that is what's tearing so many relationships apart is that women get these post men do it too, but we're talking about a woman. Women get these parasocial relationships and just think it's always better out there because women on the internet teach y'all women, oh, there's always a better guy out there. Oh, you can get a better man, girl. You better leave him. You better do this. There's a man out here who's willing to give you everything. You're not asking for too much. It's just that his standards are too low. Baby girl, sometimes you ask it for too damn much. Sometimes you ask it for too damn much. I'm sorry. You're overweight. You got a single child and you're asking for a man who makes $150,000 an episode. You're asking for too damn much. Okay? And you're expecting your husband to be this man when you're not that at all. Not even close. You're asking for too much. I would tell that man if he wanted to go for if he wanted to go to for a model, this man that was the, her ex-husband, if he was like, no, I need a woman who's fit, in shape, cooks, clean, does it all, and licks my feet. I'd be like, man, you're asking for too damn much. You're asking for a little too damn much. You want her to do everything and lick your feet? Come on, baby. Slow it down. You can't even get your weight under control. Let's, let's pump the brakes. That's all I'm saying. So, baby girl, I'm treating you like I would any average human being. Pump your brakes. I cannot believe you would divorce this man for a person who you thought that you could get because you fell into the dumb fantasy of, oh, I can get everything that's better. No, you can't. Sometimes you don't get it all, okay? You don't get to be CEO of the company, baby. That's just how it goes some days. There's only going to be one of those, okay? You can't have it all. Why the heck can't people understand that? Heck, I'll tell you a story about me real quick. I wanted to work at a job. I got passed up three times on a job, right? Because that company that I was working for didn't see me as anything more than what I was. Nothing. They didn't see me as anything more than I was. And I, I, I dealt with that. I had to look myself in the mirror and be like, apparently these people don't think that I can move up in this company. So I left because I can't have it all. I didn't, I didn't moan. I didn't complain. I told them the truth. I wrote a whole letter out. I said, hey, look. I've, I've tried to go for this job three times. You guys clearly don't think I, that I need it or I can't get it. I'm not smart enough. I don't know what it is, but clearly I'm not going to fit here. And I left. But I'm not going to stay at the company and, and, and moan and grope and be like, man, I can get a job way better than this. I might have to go get a job that makes less money than this, but I, I still might have the opportunity to move up. You know what I'm saying? Some people quit jobs to make a little less money for now, but end up making more money in the end. And also it comes with respect. Men, we are big on respect. I'd rather go work at a job that makes me less, but I still have the opportunity to move up instead of work at a job that makes more, but I will never move up because they only see me as an accountant. That's all they're ever going to see me as. They're never going to see me as a person who can run. They, I, I'll never be a supervisor. That's all they see me as. I'd rather go somewhere and be, a, uh, be somewhere where I got more respect and make less money. I'm fine with that. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying, baby. But she couldn't live that life. She couldn't believe that. She believed she had to have more and better than her husband. That stood out to us from those chats is the picture. So here's the ending where she talks about how they pretty much say, hey, what the F? The lasagna he sent you. Um, Michaela, he didn't make this lasagna. We actually found it in Martha Stewart's cookbook. This image is all over the internet and this recipe is actually pretty popular. So that's where it came from. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, that does not look like, it kind of looks like it, but at the same time, I'm like, hmm, fishy. <laughs> yeah, so basically he went on to Martha Stewart's internet cookbook screenshotted this photo and when you asked him a question he said he was too busy because he was working on this or making this lasagna and all he did was just steal that from there and then send it to you
I knew that whoever it was, either they were pretty good at cooking or they got it from somewhere and I did nowhere. So I already kind of figured that one too. <laughs> Due to the fact that this guy sent you so many things that are from so many different places all over the internet, we come to the conclusion that you're speaking to what's called a romance scammer. He's done research on you. He's looked at your That's backstage profile, your Facebook, and he's basically morphing himself into this person that you want him to be. And that's what I said. Of course, I've already seen the video, guys. But that's what I said, that he was watching her profile. Didn't I say that earlier? He's looking at her profile goes, oh, she, uh, she's delusional. I'm on top of it. I'm sure she was putting stuff in there that was crazy, like... I know a woman who's also pretty overweight and she puts stuff on the internet. She divorced her husband as well. And she puts stuff on the internet. Like there are hordes of men after her. She'd be like, baby girl, I'm all that. It's like, girl, you're a 500 pounds. What the fuck are you talking about? She ain't 500 pounds, but I mean, she's, she's really obese. It's just like, are you serious? You divorced your husband and now you got to get on here. You're 40 something years old, overweight with two kids and you think that you're high and mighty because you divorced your... Like, since when does divorcing your husband up your status? I don't get that. Women divorce their husband and act like it makes them better now. Like, girl, you don't become better after divorce. You don't just... You, your life doesn't get better after that. It's not like, oh, you got divorced? Man, all of us men are looking at a divorced woman and going, yeah, you know what? I, if she had been single and not been divorced, no. Mm -mm. I need a woman who's been divorced. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm asking for in life. No, men are gonna look at that and go, why? And if you're divorced and overweight, they're really gonna ask questions. They're gonna be like, you're divorced and overweight? Mm, no, <laughs> no. I mean, divorce does happen, but still, you're still overweight. <laughs> Sorry, man. I know that sounds so bad coming from an overweight guy, but even I'm not that delusional. I know my weight was a problem to get girls. I'm not dumb. I didn't think, oh man, I think she's just married me because I'm fat. No, I realized, you know, some girls probably gonna turn me down because of my weight. I get that. And also attaching Dacre Montgomery's photos to that profile. Scammers spend hours and days researching an individual before attempting to extract any money from them. Their objective is to identify the target's vulnerabilities. They spend days delving into every aspect Why of Why did they blur the- their oh, I guess they The purpose of their research is to establish a connection oh, with their Facebook. victims. Okay. They'll exploit sensitive situations such as the aftermath of a divorce. Look at what she's putting. I'm assuming that was her real message. into Unless every just... aspect of their lives. Never mind. No, the purpose. Not. Look at their objective is that was just a bad edit. The targets Look how they spelled recent. They spend days delving into. Oh no, man, that's every a aspect of their lives. The purpose of their research is to establish a connection with their victims. They'll look. Why? Why can't you just pause where I want you to pause? The purpose of their research is to establish I love stranger things. If this was really anything close to what she was doing, she's putting all these videos up victims. of him. They'll exploit sense Anyone else obsessed with Billy? The of a I'm pretty sure she's putting that kind of stuff because of a friend or a family member. I have a secret. It's I'm kind of in love with a celebrity right now. See, that's the kind of stuff that yeah. Yeah, and I, I do we put it past a girl like this to be doing stuff like that? And then she puts my relationships as toxic too. Oh yeah, they, they, baby girl, they were been using for years. Okay, I hadn't told him anything about my toxic ex-husband, and he just kind of vented me about and you're, that. And, and you're still calling him toxic? I mean, damn, you're already divorced, man. You ain't got to keep putting him under the bus. What if he's a better person now? Why do you keep calling him toxic? Dang, let it go. He's moved on. He didn't move out the house. He's gone now. You the one who got scammed. He could easily say, my dumbass ex-wife. That'd be mean, though, right? So, you know, let the man live. He gone now. You ain't got to keep calling him talk. Just say, my ex-husband. You ain't got to disrespect the man. About him and his girlfriend's issues or whatever. Um, so I kind of sympathize with that. And when he told me that, I was like, well, that's kind of like how me and are, like, around people. Like, I didn't tell him that. But I said, you know, I was just thinking around people. We act like we're the perfect family. Like we've got, you know, the kid, we've got 
apartment together. We've got a car together. You know, we've got all this, you know, picket fence kind of, you know. How the hell do you have a picket fence if you live in the apartment? I'm sorry. Like, we got the, I understand picket fence is a metaphor, but it's like, we got the picket fence, you live in an apartment. See, here's another, I know I'm talking a lot, but I had a lot to say when I watched this video. Another problem I have too, man, is that she said that people thought we were a perfect family. No, they didn't. They probably did not care. They probably did not care. Most people don't care about other people, man. They just live their life and live. Most people are just trying to go paycheck to paycheck. They can't care less about you and your. I'm being so harsh today. I'm sorry. They do not care about two individuals who live in an apartment with the baby. I don't think anybody was looking at y'all going, man, that looks like the perfect relationship. <laughs> I don't think they even cared about y'all. And so, see, once again, she's living in this fantasy land saying, yeah, we look like the perfect family outside. Who would have known y'all with the perfect family? What do you do? Post pictures on, online? Who who would have known that except for your close friends? And I'm almost certain you were telling other people you were t your husband was toxic because you're telling us strangers online. You're still calling him a toxic ex-husband. So I just don't truly believe that you were talking glowingly about your husband to your friends. I'm pretty sure you were telling them all the time. Oh, man, he's toxic. He don't let me do anything. He's just a terrible, awful person. Because if you could say that about your husband on in public and still calling him toxic after he's it's been months since he's been gone, and by the time this video is made, it's probably been a year since he's been gone. And you're still calling him toxic? Yeah, no, I I I'm having a hard time believing that anybody thought y'all were the perfect family. Because only people who were close to y'all would know that, and it doesn't sound like you would talk close about him. And if you're talking about Facebook, <laughs> I know people on my Facebook who are very attractive people and they get three comments when they post something. People on Facebook aren't famous, baby. Unless they are contractually like a gamer or something and they make videos specifically off their business account, like your Desi Banks of the world and stuff like that. That's different. But the average person on you of Facebook saying, here's my husband. Do you think you got 80 comments off of that? You probably got two comments that said like, Y'all are cute. That's it. So when you say to everybody, most people scrolled right past that, didn't even like the picture. I think people are so caught up. And when they get one comment on a, a freaking picture on their Facebook saying y'all are cute, they think that, that that was coming from 50 people. And everybody thinks that. When most people scroll right past that picture and kept, kept it moving. Dang. And I'm talking about, I know a woman on my Facebook right now. I grew up with her. Very attractive young lady. Right. Obviously, we were not friends anymore, but I knew her. Right. We, in high school, we knew each other. We talked every now and then, even though I was pretty much a loser in high school. She grew up. She became Miss whatever. Don't know what it was now. She's a very attractive woman still to this day. Even her, when she posts something, may get 10 comments, 10, 10 comments. So you think you, you know what I'm saying, guys? A looking family. You close the door, it's nothing, you know, it's everything, but it's literally like, this is toxic, it's narcissism, it's just everything bad. So I was like, I kind of understand that from that angle. But again, he didn't even know that at first. That's why I was like, I'll kind of keep this as my ace in my pocket. Um, but I kind of understood that angle because I was coming from a spot like that. It's something that I can't really describe. It's like someone would just have to feel it to understand it. This scammer targeted all of Michaela's vulnerabilities, tapping into her desire for creative, attractive, and attentive companion. The deception- I like, uh, thank you guys for saying that. Attractive. I'm glad they didn't take out that part. She was looking for somebody more attractive than her husband. Thank you guys for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Cause she got fooled because she was looking for somebody attractive. Let's, let's just call it what it is. Reached a deeper level when he shared his own struggle with his toxic relationship. Not to mention- All he, he had to do was guess. She said she didn't mention the toxic stuff. All he had to do was just guess. And if an attractive man comes along like that, the fact that you kept talking to him told him everything he needed to know. Everything he needed to know, even though this is a scammer and this is not this guy, 
He told everything. The fact that you kept the conversation. Because imagine if a woman's in a happy relationship and a guy like me comes along and says, hey, baby girl, what's good? She's going to take one look at my picture and move on about life. And you're not even going to text me back. That should tell me everything I need to know. But the fact that she kept the conversation going when he kept talking to her, that told you everything. That he knew right then and there. He knew that she was unhappy with her marriage. Right? Meaning that she would easily leave her husband for a good looking man. Right. Because she thinks delusionally that she can get a better man than her husband. He knew everything. The second the conversation kept moving. Come on, guys. Haven't. Have you never had a girl talk to you who is really attractive? Right. You don't think that if the girl was doing an OnlyFans, she don't know from the jump. If she says just a couple words to you, all based off of how you respond. She knew she knows she got you in her pocket. If an attractive girl talked to me today, I already know it's a scam. <laughs> I ain't stupid, boy. And number two, I'm married. I had a girl who wanted to send me pictures not too long ago. I know not send her send me pictures. She wanted to, me to send her money. And I told her, girl, I'm married. Are you crazy? And she never spoke to me again. See, people know from the jump where you stand. If I didn't respond immediately with I'm married or I'm in a relationship or no. She, if I just responded with how much you needing, bam, it's over her favorite actor on her favorite TV show. So I see, I've watched a lot of y'all scam fish episodes and all the comments, there's so many comments saying, how could these people Why fall in love with these scam fish? These total strangers and send them money and blah, blah, blah. In my case, I'm just like, I just hope that it goes to help somebody. But as far as how can you fall in love with these people? I'm just like, love makes you do crazy, stupid. That is not a good answer, girl. How do you fall in love with somebody? Love makes you do crazy things. They said, how do you fall in love? How can love make you do crazy things? They said, how'd you get to the love part? You can't say love makes you do crazy things. No, no, no. I said, how'd you get there? How'd you fall in love? How'd you say that you love this person? You can't say love makes you do crazy things, but you also fell in love. That, that, that didn't answer my question. They're saying, how did you even get to this point? Like, how'd you even get fooled? Like, what made you keep talking to him where you fell in love? Stupid, irrational things, I promise. And trauma does one And you love this man? This wasn't a real person. You fell in love with text on a screen. Same way, never mind. Thanks to a person. So instead of judging that person on what, why they done that to a total stranger that they had never met, maybe, you know, just kind of look and see if that person's ever been traumatized. Knew it! Right back to her husband. Because if you're someone like me, you're afraid of abandonment. And you're a real big people. You're afraid of abandonment, but you abandon your husband. Congrats. And you're very codependent. So it's like maybe these people have these problems and these scammers, they just kind of come in and they leech off that. It's a dopamine fix every time you wake up, every time you go to bed, several hours a day. It's a fix. It's a hit. Because he's so attractive. You couldn't believe that somebody would talk to you. Honestly, I think you guys are great. You've been fantastic. All right, that's, that's it, guys. I know it's a long conversation, but remember, I'm not attacking her personally. I'm not trying to. I'm just talking about people like her, people who are conventionally unattractive or somebody who thinks that they can do better, somebody who thinks they can get a better husband. They just fall for this stuff because they've been deluded into believing the lie that it's always greener on the other side, that you're an overweight woman who can get with a man that's that attractive. Come on, man. And if she wasn't overweight, <laughs> I would say the same thing, but I have to put her weight in there because she is, man. But any woman who thinks that they can get with a better looking man is because society tells them that they can. All the little TikTokies and stuff like that, your Shakiras of the world and all that, saying sprinkle, sprinkle, and saying that you can do this with every man looking at, I mean, come on now. They teach you that you can just go get a man who has money if you just play your cards right. And it's like, there ain't a card on the earth that's going to get you that man. You got nothing. You need a spade and you're playing Uno. <laughs> you need a spade and you got a deck of Uno cards. There ain't nothing you can play that's getting you that man. But you, they'll, they'll fool you into believing that's how it works in this world. Most average people, once again, are going to end up with average people. If you're overweight, you're probably going to get with somebody who's overweight. Right? It's, it's not... And everybody who says, oh, well, I know overweight men who get with skinny girls. Okay. So I don't care. Most, most overweight men aren't going to get with 
gorgeous women. I'm sorry, baby. Most overweight girls are not going to get with gorgeous men. Is there an exception to the rule? There are people who have fat fetishes. Yes, there's an exception to the rule. Okay? It happens. Okay? But the nutty professor is not real. Are y'all are y'all hearing me? It's funny that that was Jada Pinkett, but the nutty professor isn't good with Jada Pinkett because he has a great personality. That don't happen often. Man, why do we think this way, guys? Tell me. Why do we feel like we can have a, a, a 131 credit score and then we can go to the bank and pull out a million dollars? And they're going to just give you a loan. You got a 131 credit score and you ain't paid off your bills in years. And you think you can just roll up to the bank and be like, but, I mean, I'm a good person. How? Your credit score is 130. And things do happen in life. But banks are still going to look at that and be like, No. You can't going to be able to buy whatever house you want. You can't roll up and say, I want this $3.4 million house, but I only got $10 in my bank account. They're going to, they're going to laugh at you. They're probably going to think you're insane. So why can't we think a person like this is insane? Not her, just her. Talk about anybody who thinks this way. We need to start calling these people insane. Be like, you know, when I was, there was a, a video that I watched growing up. And this really, as stupid as it sounds, it really changed my life. It's by a person I don't like today, but his name is Brandon Carter. And this is when I was a young man. There was a video where he said, and excuse my language, but this is what he said. He said, stop being a bitch. He said, do you think you're going to be able to go get a, a brand new, um, I'm not doing it verbatim, but he's like, you think you're going to be able to go to the car dealership and get a brand new $30,000 vehicle, but you got bad credit and you, and you have no money? Are they supposed to just give you the car because you're a good person? No. And then he goes on to say that, how do you think you're going to get all these things? How do you think you're going to be able to walk up to a girl and be like, I know I'm broke. I don't have a job and I can't provide for you, but can you just get with me because I'm good looking? I mean, can you get with me because I'm a good guy? That sounds stupid. And he was just like, that's what bitches do. Not women. He meant like people who are cowardly. That's what a coward would do. He would blame the woman for not getting with him when he has nothing to give back. The same thing you saw with this woman, an overweight woman with a child who was in a marriage. She continues to dunk on her husband, calls him toxic, thinks he's a bad guy, and then thinks she can give it the man who's making $150,000 an episode. Even if he just did five or six, six episodes in the Stranger Things. I don't know how many episodes are in Stranger Things per season, but it's just that he did three episodes. So you're talking about a man who made seven hundred and uh, fit, um, not seven hundred, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in one year is gonna get with an overweight woman who takes pictures? Come on, man! I want to help the people. That's why I'm so. That's why I'm still talking about this. I just wanna. Please don't be stupid. You are going to ruin your life over this dumb stuff. You've got to look yourself in the mirror. Damn, I have to look myself in the mirror. You don't think I look at myself in the mirror and go, damn, you're fat. Even though I lost 100 pounds, I'm not goofy. I'm not dumb. I don't look at myself in the mirror and go, you're perfectly healthy now. No. You got to look yourself in the mirror and be honest because it will, it will make you so depressed. It will make you one of the most miserable people to be around if you cannot look yourself in the mirror and be like, damn, what the hell are you doing? I had to do the same thing with this YouTube channel. When I looked at what I was doing, when I was still smoking weed all the time on my YouTube channel, I had bongs sitting in the background. Go watch my old videos. It wasn't long ago. I wasn't smoking marijuana. It was CBD, but nonetheless, I was still smoking. I might as well have been smoking cigarettes. Not that I'm saying, you know, you want to do that kind, but I had bongs in the background. Go watch my old videos. I had a weed background. A marijuana plant, uh, what was it, the marijuana plant? Yeah, CBD plant in the back on a mattress. I had to ask myself one day when I was smoking on one of my live streams. I, I wasn't getting high. Once again, I'm telling you, I wasn't getting high. Just smoking, just like you would a cigarette. See, it was just CBD, no, no psychological effects. But I sat, uh, one day I finally was smoking. And I was like, what am I doing? Is this attractive to people? Not like like sexually. I mean, like, is this attractive to the people I'm trying to talk to? Like, I'm trying to help people, and here I am, smoking, with my belly out like this. Come on, hey, guys. 
Yeah. Over here singing rap songs. I just put my heart in the bag. And the body gets hurt. I'm running for your love. I'm not fast. That's what I was doing. Just sitting on camera looking like this. And thinking that 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 and thinking that I was cool. That's what I'm saying. I had to look myself in the mirror and go, what are you doing? What are you doing? You expect people to look at you and be like, yeah, that's the guy that I want to interview. That's the that's that's the man that I want to listen to. A guy who's sitting here listening to the juice world talking about smoking and doing drugs and fucking bitches. That's 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 the man I want. And men, and, and I'm sorry, but men, we do this too much. We think that we're, people are supposed to accept us in any way. We're supposed to wear whatever we want, and people are just supposed to be like, yeah, I know he only wears a, a hoodie and a do-rag in his, his videos. Yeah, but I respect that man. Yep, that, that's the man I want in my interviews. He is authentic. No, that's, that looks like a man who don't give a damn about what he's doing on the channel. If he wants to make other kind of videos, fine. Fine. I'm not saying wearing a hoodie do-rag is a bad thing. But just know that you're going to get a certain demographic and you're going to be look at, looked at a certain kind of way. And if that's your style, fine. But don't expect me to be like, yeah, I, that's a businessman right there. That's a man about his business. Look at the way he dresses. do rag in a, in a hoodie with Cheeto puffs on, and eating Cheeto puffs and smoking weed. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the guy. No, guys. <laughs> that's just dumb. We all judge each other based off how we look at each other. We all look at each other and judge in the first five seconds of seeing somebody. People do it to all of us, and then we expect people not to do it to us. That's just goofy. Don't judge a book by its cover. Fuck that. I'm judging a book by its cover. If the book says this book is about math, I'm assuming the book is about math. If you show me, if it says, if it says it's a math book, hey, look, baby, I'm gonna assume it's a math book. Okay? I don't. Not everybody should have to pick up your book and read every dang page to understand that this book wasn't actually about math. It was about it was about dogs and cats. Okay, nobody's gonna do that, man. Everybody got all day to be like, oh, oh, oh. Now I see the book was actually about how to be financially, uh, be financially successful. Even though on the front of the book it had a big booty chick on there, but now I know this book is actually worth reading. No, no. Speaking of YouTube, one more time, people judge us off our thumbnails and our titles. Nobody gives a damn how good the video was. If you can't, if you put, if you put in the title. August 31st, 2017. Nobody's going to know what the video about. They just know that the video was made on August 31st, 2017. Why would anybody watch that? Unless you're already famous. Like, of course, if Moist Critical put up a video that says August 13th, people are going to watch it because his videos don't have to have a special title because he himself is enough. If you see his face, you're going to watch the video. You know what I'm saying? But you got to understand, not everybody knows who you are. So you can't expect everybody to just be like, yep, that, that's the guy. I know he's going to talk about something great. You know? <laughs> man, dang. Man, we've been too many long videos today. 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 50 minutes. I got to get out of here. I don't smoke anymore. I haven't smoked in a long time. I don't smoke CBD at all. I haven't smoked CBD in months. Probably last time I did that was... I can't even remember now. Yeah, I don't do anything. No drinking, no drugging, no CBD, no THC, no nothing. I'm done. All right, YouTube. Goodbye.